You just got to uh, got to do a little rotation there. Are you actually outside or is that like a green screen setup? Hmm, I guess you're just going to have to take the wildest guess you can. Looks like a green screen, but Looks that's like a pretty a, cool truck. Pretty cool truck, huh? Oh, what yeah. is that? It looks like my sister's truck, only a flatbed. Well, I wish I could say it was my truck, but it's not. It's not. I wish I could say this is actually where I live. But, well, I can. I can say that. <laughs> so how you been? Dude, I've been super good. <laughs> I hope you've been good, too. Otherwise, it's going to be depressing for one of us. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let me see if I can tap into the depressing part of uh, whatever's been going on with me so that we can have, like, a balance to this episode. What do you say? Um. Okay. I mean, I just, as long as you're... As long as it's all honest and everything is, everything is, you know, whatever, whatever you're, is actually going on, that's really what I want to know. So, I mean, yeah. Well, let's see. Let me let's think start, we'll start with the bad news first, I guess. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't actually have any bad news. Oh, that's good. That, that's, not, that, that's not depressing. <laughs> I've got no bad to, news, but now, let me tell you about balance. the depressing part. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was just trying to balance out your giddiness. No, we're actually having a good time over here. My wife's in California right now, so we're playing like the single dad, also working, juggling, getting kids to school and back from all their clubs now that they're older and stuff like that. But no, it's good. I stopped by uh, I stopped by the liquor store to pick up a bottle of bourbon for tonight. And they had the Maker's Mark cask strength, which I hadn't tried the cask strength stuff yet. So I like not, the story behind this brand. Yeah, they they have a couple good stories. Yeah, it's a pretty good bourbon. So the cask strength is good. Yeah, the old weeded but, bourbon. Yep, forty six. Or not forty six. Sorry, the uh, the private res- not private release, like the FAEO two bottles and stuff. Uh, they're the signature series, some of the best weeded bourbon I think I've ever had. Oh yeah, okay. Cool. Plus, they do weird things like dip their tops in wax. That reminds me of me selling my superdoors and cookie tins and yep. stuff like that. Hand dipped every single one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got wild turkey bottle and bond. Something I only enjoy with a cigar. That's why. That's why this is happening. I also uh, yeah. got you uh, at least one bottle of Eagle Rare. At least one. Let's just say at least one. You have multiples, but you don't know if you're going to share. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can read between the lines. No, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know how many times I saw a bottle and was like, ooh, I got to get some for Garrett. I, don't, I honestly don't remember how many times that happened in the last month. So that's why I'm not sure how many I have for you. I got you. I got you. Cool, man. Well, it's been a little while. We've been up, up to some things over here, so I'm I know. Stoked to get together with you and talk about this episode. I know. I've I've been seeing it. I've I've seen you. I saw you had Adam over there, and I was bummed because I meant to jump on the uh, the Patreon Zoom call, but the, my timing was off, or I had baseball with the kids, or something, something. Because I saw the <laughs> Patreon link. I saw got the email that Adam was going to be on. I, like, oh, I got to jump on and have fun with those guys, and then it didn't happen. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Well, you remember, I mean, a lot of you guys listening probably heard the episode with Adam Wickens right after we did the snake discovery thing last summer. So that was a good time. And he and I have been talking about we need to hang out ever since. We only live like four hours apart. So I convinced him to come down to do our, our we do the Wednesday night live stream for everybody on the Reach Out Reptiles YouTube channel. But I was able to talk him into staying for an extra day just to go kind of goof off and see the sights and everything and uh i mean you've you've gotten the the tour of pittsburgh before via garrett but it's been getting more and more interesting every time i do it because we find more things and do stuff and everything so i I saw a a, uh, blue slide park i saw Blue slide park do you know what that is (laughs) no i I just saw adam posted it 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 said blue slide park so (laughs) no that that's it it was um oh man 
oh, everybody gets mad at me for not knowing this. There's some, there's some rapper that came from Pittsburgh and he went to school right there and he ended up uh, committing suicide and stuff. And it kind of made his, oh. his but he was really, uh, it's Ma- uh, Mac something, Mac. Oh, Mac Miller. Is Maybe. he from Pittsburgh? He's the one from Pittsburgh? I don't what? know. I mean, when yeah. you say Max of that, there was, I don't know if he actually, forgive me, because I also don't follow that stuff too closely or that world that closely, but Mac Miller, was he a white kid? Yeah, white kid sounds yeah, familiar. Mac, Mac yeah, Miller. Like fairly positive. And yeah, and super good, good, super talented. Yeah, so he he's from Pittsburgh. So we actually, like downtown Pittsburgh. So we went down there to go see it. And I was thinking like, okay, yeah, there, I mean, there's like, I guess some hard areas in Pittsburgh. Like, I mean, I came from LA, so maybe comparatively, I don't know. I was just thinking like Pittsburgh. I mean, it's not Detroit or anything, you know, it's not LA, you know, where you're singing about gun violence and all this other kind of I think, stuff. I think just about any, any city has their, their zone of the city. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not this one, <laughs> but, but that was kind of the point. Like when we got there, we were like, this is a super nice neighborhood. Like that's the biggest high school I've ever seen. That's like all made out of stone and carvings is huge. And, and like, it's right by Frick park. It was just this beautiful park, bunch of families, moms and kids. Although there was this one area around this blue slide and it's not a slide, like what you're thinking, like a, you know, like the elevated playground platforms of the slide. Oh, I saw the picture of it. He was sitting on the slide in the picture. Right. Adam Adam was Yeah. more like a poured concrete gutter right <laughs> you can fly down you can but barely tell it was blue <laughs> right i wonder how many times they've had to paint it because it looks like the kind of slide like you walk away with a blue butt you know what i mean but um but yeah it was it was pretty cool because there was uh picnic benches and all this stuff around it and it was funny like I, i'm not in the know adam knew what was up and thomas is like i can't believe you're from pittsburgh you never heard of him it's got to be mac miller yeah. um I saw some videos of him like doing some like freestyling, like at class or something, like at recess or whatever at, at high school or you know in between breaks, and it was it was good. Definitely, yeah. definitely was talented. I think he dated a, a, a Ariana Grande too or something. Like they had the songs together. Well, he's like. so he was like very big, very mainstream. You know, it wasn't like big in Pittsburgh, but like big everywhere. Um, and uh, and I I just don't follow that kind of stuff but it was funny because there was a bunch of you know i'd say kids 20 to 25 year olds like taking pictures and looking at all this there's all this like you know oh we love you mac and all this kind of stuff written all over the the benches and stuff there i think everyone was really sad and then there was some you know i'd put her at like maybe 38 year old suburban white mom with like three kids you know what i mean all this kind of stuff fairly well off and she's like oh yeah yeah he went to school right over here he was a little younger than me but blah 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 and they they all knew the the story you know i was like i, I wouldn't place her in like as a, a music fan of uh because it was rap right um i was like I, I don't know maybe she's into it or whatever but i i get the feeling that you know when you have a I mean, not that Pittsburgh is a small town, but a smaller town. Then you get these like kind of big celebrities from those areas. Then uh, everybody knows them. So, oh, I awesome. hear a little Finley making noise over here on the side. You gonna be okay? I'm gonna make him go to sleep. You guys, <laughs> you guys want to hear what it's like when when Garrett's being a dad after nine thirty? I mean, I feel like I've heard it before, but if you want everybody else to hear it too, that's that's your prerogative, Blake, sir. You need to go to sleep, dude. <laughs> that, I'm making noise pollution up there. I feel like it was pretty mellow. <laughs> I'll close that door off and turn the light if you got an issue. <laughs> Thank you. Good boy. Well, we've got all the kids here. I tried to put them to bed just a little while ago, but I've been spoiling them a little bit. Not not so much spoiling them. I've, I've had I've been doing my own like dad strict thing. Like they try to negotiate with me and get more time on their iPads or less chores. And I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't fly. I don't know if that works on your mother, but it don't work over here. <laughs> on the other hand, it's like, 
let's all eat ice cream and watch movies <laughs> you know, because that's what I like to do. Yeah, so, I think we we lead similar lives, Hartle. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty funny because they're just like learning how to negotiate. I've been working so much lately that, uh, you know, Ashley's kind of been doing everything. But Ashley's dad is having a big 30 year celebration at his work and like all people are you know coming from all over the place. To, gotcha. I was going to ask you why she went and not the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was just, uh, it was too much to coordinate like a quick trip with everybody. And it's, it, you know, honestly, it's not worth it. It's like thousands of dollars to fly our family across the country. So we just sent her out there because it was really important for her to be there. And I, I'm bummed out. I wish I could have gone because, you know, like all my brothers and sisters in law are there and stuff like that. But that seems like all my trips to California, it's like I'm there for two days. There's a million people that I love. And then I'm just like, bummed out that i didn't get to see everybody you know well I mean? do something different well i'm, I'm gonna go for 10 days this summer there you go. Go. And i you, i send my family out there for like a month at a time i know fairly commonly um and i'll usually meet up with them for my two-day trip at the end of a trip so that i can be an extra set of eyes and hands for Ashley flying on the airplane with four kids, little kids, you know. Well, when do you think you, when is, do you already have your days planned out for those 10 days? Like what, mm -hmm. like the sec, like is it going to be in June or is it going to be in August or is? July, July. Okay. So it'll actually be right before um, Retic Fest. So I'm going to get back barely before Schaumburg. Um, I think there's a, isn't there a super show? I believe I did time it. Where... July 9th. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's the first weekend that I'm there, but then I'll, I'll be there for like two weekends and the week in between. So hopefully I'll get to see kind of like my side and her side of the family and some old friends and stuff like that. So, okay. But yeah, it should be pretty cool. And then retic fest is right after that. Which right. You're going now, right? I don't have a ticket. Oh, uh, I, well, I, I, I see where this is falling. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We'll get you short sorted. We better find that quick. But, uh, <laughs> unless somebody wants to location sponsor Retic Fest, and then that would be kind of cool to podcast at Retic Fest or around it. Yeah. It'd be fun to do the morning after. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like totally. The quiet after the storm kind of thing. Yeah, that, quiet. that'd be fun. Definitely. Dude, speaking of podcasting and stuff in Retic, so... I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to talk about this, but you know what? I've, I've decided if somebody doesn't want me to talk about something, they need, they need to preface it with, please don't talk about this yet. But <laughs> otherwise I don't, I can't keep track of all the things that people tell me that. And I think, idiosyncrasies. What's that? We can't negotiate your idiosyncrasies. You gotta yeah. be <laughs> I think that, I think the best bet is just that, well, I think what will end up happening is that people will just stop telling me stuff if they realize I'm going to keep saying it. Um, <laughs> But there's a, a couple of our friends are starting a podcast for specifically for retics, um, specifically oh. for like to talk about the issues of people who are considering keeping a retic and what you can expect and like going over different things. Like if you if you're considering keeping a retic and what you need to know before yeah, you actually pull the trigger or if you just talking about here because i have a couple of friends that do every tick podcast right yeah i know me too but the, and i know yeah. there's a, a couple out there which seems crazy that there could be multiple retick podcasts. well it doesn't seem crazy but really? it's such a yeah. niche thing but uh lucas bonyara and nathan katz oh well that would be cool that'd yeah. be interesting what's really cool about it is that just like the music for the intro of this podcast I got to write the song and the jingle. They they reached out to me to <laughs> they reached out and I'm gonna be the first guest. So because I'm a retake expert, um that Ooh. people need to have. <laughs> there you go. I well, can talk yeah, I mean, you you definitely have a breadth of experience with retakes. I mean, you know what's up. And I guess if they are doing that, because the guys that I know that do the retake things are kind of like the you know, like the old timers or some of those guys that were keeping with me in like the late nineties or early two thousands. Yeah. Like, like Jake's guys. like Jake's. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I mean, you've got, uh, you've got, um, Oh my gosh, guys, what is it? Retick talk. Is it retick talk? That's uh, Jake's Jake. right. Jake Klotz. Yeah. Well, but now it's, uh, it's James and, um, 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's Monday night. I, I can't. <laughs> hey, hey, and- I, for, I forgot that it was Monday night. Yeah. Like it, I, it's right there. Yeah. Really in shape yeah, guy yeah. from Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Chip. Chip. Indo is the other guy that hosted. But I, I think it was Jake's, but I don't know that he uh, that he actually hosts it every time. Mm. G'day, Finley. Do you want to come say hi to everyone online and then go straight to bed before you get in big trouble? Come here. Hi. Nope. Hi. Yeah, really nice to see you. Hi. That's Brian Tesco and whoever else is listening. Hey, Say Finn. Hi. I'm Good Finley. to see you, bud. Hi, I'm Finley. Say, I'm about to be in trouble. I'm about to be in trouble. Oh, oh, oh that last word. He kind of mumbled that last <laughs> word. Right. He's yeah, about yeah. to be in something. <laughs> Unless you go straight to. You better get going. Hurry. Run. Is that a fiddle leaf, fiddle leaf fig behind you? No, that's green screen or anything. That's a real plant. That's why I said, is that a fiddle leaf fig? Oh, I think he says a fake leaf. I said, no, that's a fiddle leaf fig. It is. <laughs> awesome. My wife just found them. She discovered that she loves them, which she's not like a plant person. So she's like, oh, I love these things. Yeah, Hillary too. Hillary has a couple fiddle leaf figs now. Oh, yeah? They yeah. seem to be too slow growing for my tapes. They're pretty I slow, know. it seems. I don't think they go anywhere too fast. I exist with something. I want to, like, watch it grow. We're living similar similar lives right now, my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dude, let me unload on you with all the awesomeness. Okay, so th- there's the podcast thing I wrote the jingle for, which is really cool. It's actually the first time I was hired to write music for something, which, I mean, technically where I was just hired specifically to write something for somebody. I've been hired to play, play music for years. I played, I've been paid. Yeah. I made a living for it for a while, but I've never actually been paid to write something for somebody that okay. least like, at least that my brain is telling me that I, so that, that was awesome. I, I freaking ran a half marathon a few days ago, which is further than I've ever run in my entire life. How you've been working on that. How did that go? I, well, I ran that. And then the next morning I ran another four miles just to, cool down so it went well i mean it's it's how i built up to it because i ran like 10 then i ran like 12 but so i'm I'm going for like 20 i'd like to run 20 before i do this spartan thing but so that's Ooh. going well like running it's like picking up on that i've got three clutches hatching right now i've never and a fourth that'll probably start pipping tonight or tomorrow morning which i've never had that many clutches hatching at the same time it's kind of exciting just like all, oh all ball pythons all ball pythons yeah all ball pythons okay. cool and uh, dude, and went to this uh, retreat last night. Hume Hume Lake. I don't know if, have you heard of it? I've been to Hume Lake. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah. That's a campground. Yeah. I used to teach outdoor education school. I'd take people in the woods around there and teach them about plants and animals native to the area. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. So I know Hume Lake. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was quite. I had never been, and it was quite the experience. I mean, yeah. there was that like. Was, a gigantic uh conference you know whatever area like they've got all those got things like that all over california but hume, hume lake was like the campground that would like host events for all the campgrounds <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so yeah that was pretty cool yeah, it, was a, it was a fisherman's retreat so it was like 400 something guys um were there and i mean you know fishing and, and shotguns and and worship and just i mean watching watching kids get get saved during during worship and like dude it was it was so it was so amazing like i i I, when was that this weekend this past weekend okay so you still got that uh, little spiritual high going on right now oh yeah i feel like i've had that for i feel like it's just been building since like september of last year but yeah that's cool that's cool yeah it's pretty Uh, sweet man pretty fun to get around like with all that stuff you know it's funny I just ended up showing my kids um I was looking for a movie I was digging through our old like DVD collection and I pulled one out that says Christmas on Komodo and it was basically it was like my first YouTube episode but predates YouTube uh (laughs) and it was a, a video that a buddy of mine put together with like interviews of me living in indonesia and all this kind of stuff and 
um, being there during that tsunami and everything. I had to actually walk out of the room for a part of it, but I let my kids watch it. And they're like, this is really sad, dad. And I was like, mm. I, I try to like, not necessarily shield them through reality, but be there with them and coach them through it. You know what I mean? So, but um, yeah, but I, I can't watch that stuff myself. Not because it was like so horrible or graphic or anything like that, but just because the I, memories. I, yeah. too like that's footage from me being over there. And I, I just can't even look at it anymore. Cause it's like, I don't remember that stuff. So like it brings it back up. So I actually had to like plug my ears in the other room and do a little la 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 la. Cause even the music that was put to it and everything, I was like, ah, I'm not, wow. not dealing with it today. So, I, I can, I, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Cause I was watching this uh, documentary. I've been reading this book called the intentional father. And one of the, uh, things that they say to do they give little assignments every chapter to to go along with and one of them was to watch this documentary called the work which is just kind of follow some guys some like civilians that go into um Folsom prison and do like a a couple day workshop or i don't remember how long it was a week or something or a couple days um but just going in and working with some of the guys program or what was that almost like a scared straight no movie. no it's it's like regular guys like guys that are of that age not like kids that are getting in trouble but just guys that um it's part just a program regular guys like guys that just have normal jobs or whatever or or, or are they have never oh. experienced any kind of prison situation they're not in trouble at all they're, they just kind of like volunteer to go <clears throat> and have a people in prison yeah work with them and like have you know you have like uh i was I working you. with working with guys and just talking about stuff and it, big big part was a spot for those guys that were in the prison to vent, you know, and, and kind of like open up where because when you're inside a place like that, you got to keep some pretty harsh walls up, you know, to just to survive. So it was kind of like a space for guys to those guys to let down their walls and for the guys that have never been in a situation like that to like kind of get a feel for what a different type of life would be, you know, or how how you know the the other side of the the coin, I guess. Mm. Um, and so it definitely brought up some emotions for me having been in that situation and just like, I, I, just, I just lost, I couldn't even watch it. I, I just stopped watching it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how that stuff works, like all our different coping mechanisms and stuff like that. I, I feel like, um, you know, the, the battles that we face today are, are less uh, black and white. They're almost harder in some way. Like, People are soft today, but at the same time, their battle, like you don't even know who your enemy is anymore. So that mm. gets using, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't like if, you know, it used to be like, well, let's make a stand for what's right. And nowadays it's like, well, what is right? You know mm. what I mean? Oh, gosh, you know, certainly, so, certainly a good amount of confusion out there. A lot, lot of, uh, well, there's, there's so much information, so much more information for a, a human mind to process. Uh, since the advent of the internet, right? It's it's an oh, yeah. insane amount of uh, input. I think that I think that we had that kind of building up in our society, and then and then the the whole COVID thing for the last couple of years it was almost like taking everything that had been building and things that we hadn't even really learned to deal with, and then putting them in a pressure cooker for two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's a it's a pretty interesting place out there you know so much is out of our control and things like that and, and it's you know some people have found like a whole new lease on life and then other people have just fallen apart you know because of it um it's crazy it's just it's just crazy to see what's going on you know what i mean yeah i've pulled back in a kind of a big way you know i spent a good amount of time online you know doing just communicating and uh, doing stuff through that and i've the last couple months two or three months i've I've pulled back pretty hard i'm still posting often you know I, I still make my videos and put them up and i chat with people in the comments of the video and um but i've really i i'd say of the amount of communication that i've done with people online which is it's it's a double-edged sword but it's definitely been cut way back and i do a lot more of that communication with people local to me in person now and it's much more fulfilling and much more uh <clears throat> it just feels back to what i really want to be doing you know which is making 
real in person in the flesh connection was with folks you know it's just so much more of a a thing than through the i mean i know that you and i don't really don't like to do this over zoom but you know being on the other side of the country sometimes that's just what it is and but those type of those type of things i've been doing a lot more and i say it's a double-edged sword because there's a lot of people in the reptile world in particular that i really love and care about um and pulling back from those internet communications, you know, that, that happens less, you know, whether it's just the back and forth on Instagram or definitely face, I haven't even opened Facebook for months. Um, mm. So I do miss that aspect of it, but I, I kind of look forward to doing that. It shows, you know, I, I don't know if wait, I know where you're wait, at on you that. Just wait until you can do it in person is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part, well, that's kind of how I grew up. Because I mean, I well, you know my situation. I have a huge family here in Pittsburgh. Well, yeah, we we grew up before the internet, my friend. That's, that's... <laughs> well, well. My point is like, I grew up in California. We were the only Hartles that moved out there, so no one had ever heard my last name. I didn't know anybody. Every time I went to a new school, it was like you know nobody. There's no connections. There's no nothing. Um, and uh, so you know, you yeah, I mean figure out life and do your thing but it was interesting like i don't know why i think communication wasn't as readily available and honestly my family is just not very good at like regular communication keeping up with people but then we would come back for like a family reunion every three four years and see all the family and be like hey what's up you know and you're just like yeah and it's like a day hasn't passed except that you have so many stories to tell now you know what I mean? That's the only way to tell that there's been any passage of time. So I, I've always loved my extended family for that, that we are all just like absolutely love hanging out, you know, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's kind of interesting. It, it feel it, you know, like being unplugged from the Internet and then seeing people in person feels like that, you know. Yeah, definitely. I'm, honestly, I'm really looking forward to this retick fest event at our new shop. I mean, Wait, I mean, I can I can imagine life. that you wouldn't be. <laughs> well, the, my life has been turned upside down since having this new, like the building is, I mean, it's just a building. It doesn't actually matter. Right. But there were so many things I wanted to be able to do that I was limited because I only had one small space and it was a space that I shared with my family. You know what I mean? So there's only so much that I that I can do or or accomplish or or set out to try to take on. And now I'm just like freed up. My big thing is just finances. I, I don't I need more money. I need all the money in the world to do all these crazy things. But um, but I have the time, I have the space, you know, because we've got uh, I've been telling everybody I need a building and a sales guy. Right. Because sales was taking so much of my time and the building was I mean, we were just absolutely limited. So it's fun to see all these new enclosures going up. And I mean, there's so how's, many. How's the big one with the uh, Jeep going? Oh, working on it, working on it. I mean, it's going to be a bigger project than what I was describing in that that one vlog. You see the vlog where I was planning it out on the reach. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to get a 10 foot container with doors on both sides and do this. And then which is a great plan. But in reality, they're like, you can't get those containers. Those don't exist. There's a shortage on containers. Don't you know they're all sitting in the bay right now? So like, <laughs> it's just, you know, super expensive right now. Uh, you know, it's funny. They're going to be like dirt cheap in two or three years when I don't need them anymore because there'll be like stockpiles of all the Ikea containers with all their furniture they haven't been able to put in their stores, flooding the shores all at once or whatever. But I'm going to buy while it's high. You know, why not? And uh, and do it. So I'm going to do it, but it's going to take a lot of fabrication. I'm going to do it myself. I'm just going to buy some tools and vlog it and have some fun. Cool. So I, I think a lot of people like that. The, the vlog channel that we have has turned very much into kind of like the old school retail reptiles where it's like Garrett just making things happen by himself and trying to do, you know, like a lot of DIY stuff and, you know, um, which has been fun. The last video I put up was talking about that, like talking about the balance of, you know, having reptile stuff on my vlog channel and sometimes not. And I really asked people like they're what they would do in my shoes. Cause I'm always kind of torn between 
always having something reptile because there's so many people that come over there based on, you know, all the, all the, like your video is not going to perform if you don't put reptiles in there. Yeah. Right. Um, and even though that channel I started just as a vlog, like that's what it is, a vlog channel. Just you've seen it. You were there. You were there for some of the first ones, like in person. Yep. It's just and we, and we were talking about mites in that video and whatever. So there was that that inclusion because reptiles are a big part of the life. But a lot of people's response, the the I'd say the bulk of the responses as far as what people's ideas were to like how to how to uh, overcome my struggle with it was oh just start a different channel for just <laughs> I was like that's what this is that's yeah. what this channel I started this channel to do that <laughs> I know it's funny well we just started it and I'll tell you boy it is tough we got we've been hammering away there's some beautiful videos on there Thomas like this is a vlog channel like quality wise it's very high you know um for production value and stuff like that uh, you know, I mean, it is a representation of our life. So entertainment value is going to be probably like <laughs> when we do cool stuff, it's cool. <laughs> we don't do anything cool. We try to like, you know, get intentional or serious and stuff and, and just be us in front of the camera and, you know, share what's on our hearts. So, um, but yeah, I'll tell you, we have like a thousand subscribers, just a little over on that channel after hammering away on it pretty hard. So that's not enough for what we want to do with it you know so but it has, channels is really, hard right now start, starting the new ones are yeah has been very difficult oh my gosh the u.s art channel everyone that's listening to this probably already has subscribed but you guys need to go subscribe that needs to represent the industry it's like four thousand people on there and nobody cares and it's just like oh so depressing working with u.s art because you see how much like people talk on the internet a lot, but when you actually are like in the know of what people are doing for US Arc, it's like, wow, this is pathetic, guys. We need to be better. We need to be better, you know? And I just mean as an industry in a whole, I'm not picking on anybody, but. Um, oh, you, can, you can pick on me if you need. Well, I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So that, that one's been tough, but. We've been having some fun on Instagram. Uh, we've just been screwing around with like short format reels and things like that. And Aiden's kicking butt over there. And we have several reels that are in the millions now. Um, we have one that's that's blowing up at the moment. It's like over 15 million views or something. Wow. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, it's a snake laying eggs. Just like just random. Like they don't want to know anything. Don't teach me anything. Don't show me anything real just funny moments. So like our biggest ones are like, we have one with a snake that like shed its nose and it's like flipped back over its eyes and it's looking around like, I can't see, I can't see anything. And that's the real, and everyone loves that one. That's that uh, break a million. It was a house snake, you know? It's awesome and also depressing. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> it's so, like, what does well? Stuff of very little, uh, you know. Con- it, it's like, I... I hope I can get a snake to fart on camera because, <laughs> because then all of a sudden everyone will watch that video. Dude, you know, like, I just, I just watched for whatever reason it came across my thing and I, I wa- fell asleep watching it the other night. Uh, Idiocracy, you know, that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just reminded me oh, of yeah. like, it, I forgot, I forgot everything about it. It's one of those movies you watch it. You like, I remember Brondo and that was about it. I remember they tried to give the plants Gatorade basically. And that's, that was like one of the big downfalls. Yeah, in the future. And he's like, Joe Schmo, a little bit below average today. Yeah, he was actually, they- actually <laughs> average. He was like the most average guy in the military they could find. That's why they picked him. He's like literally average on every across the spectrum, the most average guy that exists in the world. Yeah, to- everyone's dumb yeah they freeze and they plan to do like one year or something and he gets frozen for like 50 years or something and yeah they all the people all the smart people were too smart they're like oh it's it's not time to have kids yet to to their own detriment where they never had kids and then all the people with very low iqs are like breeding with their breeding (laughs) breeding with their wife and their neighbor and then their kids (laughs) doing the same (laughs) it's just everybody's just an idiot basically and the number one movie in the country He's just a dude stand, a dude's butt on the screen and he's farting. And that's like, <laughs> it wins an Oscar or whatever. And, that's <laughs> and the funniest at. and the most highest performing television show is a guy that just keeps getting hit in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of sounds like reels. 
Yeah. Oh but, man. You know, so here's what's funny that you like when you say oh 15 million, like what does that number do for you, right? So just to kind of put it in perspective, I guess we've been running our YouTube channel for way too long to have 27,000 subscribers, but that's what we have, right? On our Superdorf specific educational channel. So we started our Instagram. It's you know, a lot more open. It's not just the super doors or whatever. It's just lots of kind of just fun stuff or whatever from our lives. So that one has now exceeded. So on Friday, when I left, uh, it had like 30,000 followers on Instagram. Now, Instagram, as you know, is newer because you made me do it. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, but we, we left on, on Friday, it was 30,000. We had this one real blow up and we come back and we have 35,000 followers. So the actual like click through traffic, if you want to put it that way or whatever it is, you have 15 million people watch your little video and go, uh, 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 that's cool. 5,000 of them will follow you to find more of them, right? Well, I had a little bit of a, well, just an idea. I'd say epiphany, but that's giving it too much credit. Um, over the weekend that I was like, you know, these, these type of people, the 5,000 people that followed us for this, just a snake laying eggs, right, are not following because they want to learn about Kalatoa Island animals or any of that stuff. They're just following because they like the little weird highlights. Maybe they're into reptiles or something. They're waiting for that snake fart. They're waiting for a snake fart. Yeah. Or, or whatever. And I was like, these are the people, those 5,000 people should have subscribed to our vlog and not, because that's kind of what it's like, you know what I mean? It's just all the... Except the that the, the real is only 15 or seconds or a minute or whatever, right? Well, I know, but that's why I'm not talking about the 15 million people. I'm talking about the 5,000 that followed us mm. because they want more than 15 seconds of that. You see so, what I'm getting? I don't know. Are you guys putting snake farts on the vlog? Uh, yeah, if you watch our vlog, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. The, the one that's going to come out on Saturday is, uh, me and Adam goofing around. So we did a vlog last week where Adam came over, he cut a clutch with us and looked around the shop a little bit. And that's our video. And then he just released the video on his channel, which is kind of like his, I think he called it like, I was wrong about retakes or something. And he put that up, which I just watched. It was really good. I was like, wow, look at all this amazing B-roll of my snakes. I wish I could have cool B-roll like that of my snakes. I, I, I really like Adam, man. He's a cool dude. He's a very cool dude. Yeah. But this is why it's fun. That So we, we had so much footage of goofing around with Adam that we split it into two parts. So he's only here two days. He came Wednesday. It was all business stuff. And then Thursday, we just goofed around all day. So the all business stuff vlog already went up. The one that's going up next week is just us goofing around. And what I was saying about my Pittsburgh tours, I used to take you guys downtown, kind of shape sites, all that stuff. Blue Slide Park was, was something he wanted to do. Um, but what I've started to do now that the weather is a little bit nicer is be like, all right, you've seen all the pavement, you've seen all the sidewalks. Do you want to see where I live in Pittsburgh? And I take them out in the woods. So I took them out in the woods. We caught a water snake that was like biting me all up. We caught a snapping turtle in this muddy grime and all this stuff. And, and we had a, a blast. And I, oh, I, I whipped him with like stinging nettle. I pulled some plants up with stinging nettle. He took his shirt off and I was whipping him with it. <laughs> that's that's awesome. idiocracy level right there. That's, <laughs> this is well, that's, that's, that's good for you though. It is good for you, but it's yeah. also hilarious to whip your friend with it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were laughing because, like, you know, he was timid around the water snake. He did not want to hold this water snake. He watched it bite me, and he's like, uh-uh, you know. And then the deal was I would catch the snake, and he would catch the turtle because, you know, I know where to go get this stuff. So then when, when he realized he'd have to, like, get muddy to get the turtle, and I don't want to give it away, but you watch the vlog. But um, – he was like, uh-uh. So I did that too. So that's why I whipped him with the stinging metal. I was like, you got to do something that people are going to think you're a pansy, man. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I already thought it when you said it. So yeah, I yeah, I, and I'm thinking now I want to do some other stupid video where you and I see who can get bit more by a water snake. <laughs> oh my god, we need to do that. You well, because you're the only person so far that can really like. I, I was just noticing this as I was giving Adam the tour. Like Adam's game, he's not a, a wuss. He's been around reptiles, loves reptiles. He got bit by a couple of baby retics in the shop. No big deal. You know what I mean? He can hold his own. But then when you go like herping with Garrett, it's just like a different story. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. He, like when I was with Clint, Clint will nerd out over the animals at a level that I can appreciate, right? Like, oh, we're both seriously nerding out. He He'll actually beat me because he nerds out about like bugs and I'm like, okay, here's a cool bug, but let's go find some reptiles. You know, I mean, I think, I think anybody at, at face value or even at a glance would tell you that Clint is going to beat you at the nerding out. Well, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like few people can do that. So it's fun for me to go to Cl with Clint. Cause I'm like, this must be how I look to normal people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you and me, like, you'll have to watch how I caught the snapping turtle. I'll just say that I, I, you know, like, I think you would do it. I don't think you would have any problem with it, you know, and I want to see how far, I think the only thing that would separate us is, is my experience level versus like, especially if you could start pushing towards like venomous and crocodilians and stuff like mm. that. But you know what I mean? Like non-venomous snakes, you'd be right there. You know what I'm saying? Even like the big, we were, you were talking to me about when you went to Indonesia and you're trying to catch that water monitor. And you're like climbing through the bushes and all this stuff. And you're like, I don't know how much tore up I want to get, but I really want to get my hands on one of these. You know, yeah, it just, yeah, I don't yeah. know. We, we I, should do it. I free handled some rattlesnakes or whatever, but the, I posted it on uh, Facebook when I, when I first was, coming into the online reptile scene i was like oh man i'm never doing that again <laughs> yeah yeah no you don't want to do that i i i definitely free-handed free handled my share of reptiles while i was learning about them which is so silly it's like one of those things everyone does early on <laughs> in their learning journey about reptiles i don't know why that is but you're learning uh, yeah but I, but i remember you remember when I went with you and Brian Gundy and he was like getting mad at me for getting a little too close to everything all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was getting mad at you for getting too close to that rattlesnake. Well, that's because you guys wanted to keep hiking and I'm like, no, I'm going to find it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> it was like a little guy and it like yeah. popped off the trail and I didn't get enough. I know. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know how I saw that thing. No, that was, that was, I, I think that I, I've had the same experience where I, I, I'll go find something and see something. I actually had one that was exactly like that at my parents' house. Just the, you know, these little rattlesnakes can almost curl up on an acorn. You know, these yeah, little they're tiny, tiny. Babies, and they're not moving and they're perfectly camouflaged. It's not like they're rattled or something. They don't even have a rattle yet. And you walk by and you're like, there's a rattlesnake. And you're like, how did I ever see that? You know what I mean? I can't find my TV remote. It's sitting right in front of the pencil that I have behind my ear. But here's a little rattlesnake 20 feet away the size of an acorn. I guess That's the cool thing about being out in the field when you're looking for stuff like, like a rattlesnake, when you're looking for the thing that could potentially hurt you, you don't, you don't have to worry about it like surprising you because you're looking for it. Like, like when we were in Australia and like you, people are like, oh, they got all the stuff that's going to kill you there. It's like, yeah, but when you're, when you're looking for that stuff, it's not, you're not worried about it. Cause you're actually actively like, where is, where is the King's Brown snake? Where, where, where are these snakes at? Where are these spots? I want to see them. So you're actively looking. It's not going to surprise you because you are it's the trying to find it. Sight. Yeah. You're happy when you see it's a positive, not yeah. a dirty or anything. Well, you know, I actually used to tell a story about this to try to encourage kids when I did that outdoor education science stuff and i used to tell the story about um i mean you know we have a little bit of like native blood in our our family and stuff like that so i used to talk um i used to love tying stories like that and especially when you're out hiking in the woods and trying to teach people about appreciating nature and all that but i said there was a, a wall street investor who had a, a thing he was trying to get like a casino or something and he took this Native American out. He's trying to convince him all these different things. He's walking him through downtown. And 
in the middle of the hubbub and the noise and the traffic and the, all the crazy stuff that would go on downtown New York, the, uh, the Native American fellow goes, wait, do you hear that? And he stops and they walk across the street and he's like looking and no, no, I, he's like, I, I hear this, I want to see it. And, and he, he finds a plant and there's like a, a cool cricket, like a Katie did or whatever that's in there making a sound. And he's like, I've always heard that you guys had these here. I wanted to find one of these. And the guy's like, how did you hear that in the middle of town? And uh, he said, well, it's, it's all your, a matter of your priorities. What do you, what do you tune your ears to? What do you, what does your heart want? You'll, you'll hear it. And the guy's like, no, he's like, people like us here in New York, you're just on another level. We are not tuned into anything. We're not connected like you are. And he goes, yeah, you are. He goes, I, I think I could prove it. This is after spending the day with the Wall Street broker. He goes, okay. So the, the Indian took a pocket full of change out and threw it on the street, went shing, you know what I mean? All the coins hitting and rolling away. Everyone stopped and looked. And it was like, what are you, what are you in tune with? And you know that happens when you hear that, you know what I mean? And boom, your attention is there. And that was the, that was the, I'm, I'm retelling it poorly. You know what I mean? No, you did a, You did an okay job. You did fine. But yeah, I used to tell that to the kids. Like, what do you, what do you tune your, tune your life into? That's the stuff you're going to, you're going to see more of, you know, like you're talking about all the good things that happen and I'm talking about being busy and all this kind of stuff, but. I think both of us are fairly tuned into finding cool opportunities and little adventures and positive stuff in life. So we see it a lot when it happens and you can be living right next to somebody going through the same life as you, but sees it very differently because they're tuned yeah. into something else. That's, that's true. That's true. I was definitely blessed with that perspective to always be like, well, where's the good at here? Where's the good? Where, 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 what's going to be, what's good, what good is coming of this? And that seems to where I generally focus. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. Exactly. I I don't think you can deny that there is cool stuff in life. You know what I mean? It's just I watch people do it all the time. Yeah, I, I think there's a I think that the thing is there's like a hunger for it that some people don't have and some people do. You know, some people are I, I think it's if you chase well, okay. Before I get too deep into this, because what I was about to say kind of ends up running along the chime of my diving deep into the shallow end. So let me throw this out here and then we shall continue. Sounds that? Uh, sounds that? Sounds, sounds <laughs> that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, here it is. Why does everything that's so good for you taste terrible food wise? Wait, have we oh, done this before? Have we? I don't know. I'm asking. I don't know that we have. I'm just, it seems like something that we if would we, have done. If we have, it's time to bring it back up again. <laughs> maybe we haven't. Maybe, maybe, okay, sure. Maybe we haven't. Maybe, maybe I've, hit, I mean, I've definitely had this conversation or definitely know this premise of why w w everything that's good for you tastes bad. <clears throat> well, you, you know, I mean, I'm like, super, super sharp listener to the podcast somewhere that's going to be like, yes, episode six. <laughs> but maybe not maybe not maybe i'm just uh over lapping this with some other conversation in life no it's quite possible that i've just completely forgotten the conversation no, no i'm not now that i think about it actually i'm not i'm not actually pulling up that we've actually done this for a diving deep in the shallow end um segment but why does everything my buddy in arizona um great guy uh, has He's like a man's man. He's like a cross between Foghorn, Leghorn, and Yosemite Sam. Um, <laughs> and he has six daughters, three granddaughters. He calls them all boys. Boys! <laughs> um, it, he had a sign on his deck that said, everything I love is uh, illegal, fattening or i forget what the third thing is but yeah it's it kind of goes along with that like in all this stuff i love ice cream ice cream if i could live off ice cream we're totally totally happy because it's like my favorite thing to eat i could eat literally gallons of it in a single evening and the only reason i don't that's right, that's right. i thought about the it. only yeah. reason i don't is because i know that it will kill me and it'll put me in a very early grave and i don't want that 
but I do want to keep eating ice cream. And again, just to kick the dead horse and repeat myself over and over again, the only reason that I don't eat multiple gallons of ice cream a night is because I know that it will affect my health very poor, very badly. It'll have an extremely negative effect on my health and my lifespan. And that's I the think only reason I don't think you don't eat gallons of ice cream every night because I've been with you before and I am amazed how many gallons of ice cream you can eat in the night. <laughs> I mean, every night. Okay. So <laughs> I don't, <laughs> It happened at the retreat too. There's you know, dessert on uh, the Saturday night. There's like brownies and, and ice cream. And, and I walk, go back to the table of dudes that you know, I've just met that weekend. And, and they're like, Whoa, <laughs> is there any brownie underneath that pile of ice cream? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is a little actually, but <laughs> oh, I ate it all. and just exposed the brownie. I was like, ah, oh, that was my, that's my plate for you the like ice cream. Birthday cake or are you like, skip the cake give me more ice, two scoops of ice cream kind of guy uh, uh the only time let's let's put it this way if i'm gonna eat cake there's got to be ice cream with it like i'm not just gonna have cake that's unacceptable well, well, you know, birthday party they always have cake and ice cream and they're like here's your cake here's your scoop of ice cream i've always been like a, i don't want the cake just i mean i always i always say just give me a little small thing of cake and then could i please have extra ice cream because i'm okay to eat the cake as long as it's so i the ideal thing for me is like two to three parts ice cream for one part cake for each bite that's my yeah, ideal really if i'm cool. going to eat cake oh, but i am not a fan of a, a birthday cake icing no thanks well there's some really good icings out there there's some that are you know there's the ones that like are super fluffy and feel like they're just like whipped We're not sugar talking about like gourmet stuff here i'm talking, talking about cream i like the cream cheese frosting cake. type of stuff yeah yeah. Well, some p- people make really good birthday cakes. My my uh, my sister's mother in law makes this cake that is like so moist. It's like one of the cakes that is the only cake I've ever eaten where I was like, maybe I could eat this without ice cream because it like it's just like you know it's like I feel like it's al dente. Like you know how people do think oh you press the fork down through the cake and pick it up with the fork. Oh, that means it's good. This cake I think you could just chuck it at the wall and it would stick. <laughs> 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 those are the ones i like though that, that are like carrot cake with a million walnuts in it or something that's that's me but there are you know what there are good things the things that are good for you that well it depends on your perspective because you need to eat something to survive if you don't eat anything you're going to it wither away and die it is actually like super good and really good for you that i Eggs. enjoy no no i don't even think they're all that good for you Ribeye, ribeye steak. Blueberry. What can you break? <laughs> Blueberries are the only things I can think of where people would consider it like, oh, that's like a superfood kind of, but are really mm. good. Like I could eat just fistfuls of blueberries. Oh yeah, I brought some fruit blueberries. So our um, pastor at the um, local church up in Paso here picked me up to go to that retreat. And when I got in the car, I was like, oh, I brought road snacks. He's like, what you got? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I got blueberry. I know it's kind of like apprehensive. I was like, I got blueberries, raspberries, yeah, like, bananas. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got chips too. I got chips too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, blueberries are good. I had I had a couple different types of blueberries this, this weekend and also cherries. Oh, Ooh, some good cherries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're quite as good for you as the blueberries, but I know a lot of the really, like, dark varieties. You know, it would be really cool. You know, you, you do, like, wine tastings or, like, bourbon things and stuff like that. It would be cool. Uh, you're saying I have several different types of blueberries, and I'm like, I don't know if I know types of blueberries. Big and small is what I'm thinking. <laughs> but, but, like, it would be cool to be like, here's – 27 different species of blueberry you know i don't even, I don't even know if there's multiple species. i assume there is but i just meant well, from different producers like, but there certainly would be varieties like corn you know stuff like that they might be domestic but um yeah that would be kind of cool to sit down and fruit, fruit is one of, berries are definitely if you're going to eat fruit because there's even things when if you're if you're following like a diet where like you're trying to do no carbs or yeah, most things like are protein, very, very yeah. sugary. Um, grapes, I think, are probably the worst on the glycemic index, but or certain grapes. But uh, but berries, for whatever reason, 
I don't know the science behind it. Um, but I think berries are some of the fruits that even people that are like diabetic and whatnot, they can have blueberries and raspberries and, and things like that. And it doesn't affect their blood sugar um, in they a negative way. They don't seem to be that altered either. Like if you go get raspberries at the grocery store and you go out here in my backyard, we have a couple little sprigs of like wild raspberries that grow up in the summer. They taste the same. They might be like bigger or, you know what I mean? Something like that because you're grown in a greenhouse or whatever. But it's it's nothing like, you know, like I just mentioned corn. Look at corn and where it came from. It was like basically just grass before, <laughs> you know what I mean? Corn you know what is else like, is a grass, technically? What's that? Uh, coconut. Coconut trees are in the, the grass <laughs> family. Really? I yeah. guess I could believe that based on their, would palm be the same then? I assume so. I assume so. Um, I just know coconut for sure. I've got a buddy who lives on Big Island, which, and he's kind of a fruit farmer and Big Island also has the largest variety of fruits anywhere on the planet. Um, and he's the one that told me that. And I, I just assume that he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, the thing that brought it up was we were talking about the stinging nettle thing because I made Adam eat it and then I whipped him with it. Um, and it's super good for you, but tastes horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually don't mind the taste of it, but but whatever. I, I like a lot of that stuff anyway. But, what else? Uh, uh, dandelion is, greens. Dandelion greens are in that okay, same kind of category. That's exactly where I was going. So we watched like a YouTube thing on the health benefits of uh, of stinging nettle, and it is amazing. They're saying that like it's one of the most nutritionally dense plants on the planet. Now I do feel like we've talked about this on this walk. Nope. But then it, it rolled into a dandelion one. Uh, it was like a little five-minute video on dandelions. And my daughter has this little uh, tea set and she loves making tea. She can heat up her own tea and she's got a little cute tea set. And so she likes making tea. And I taught her at one point that you can make a citrusy type of tea out of some pine needles using the kinds of pines that we have out in the front yard. So she loves to go collect those and make it. Then they saw that you can make dandelion tea. And then they're like, every part of the fruit is that or the plant is edible and the the uh she's very excited because the roots of the dandelion make a tea that makes you have to go pee and the french gave it a name that's like basically like you're gonna wet the bed tonight <laughs> like dandelion tea. so now like her brothers and sisters like when she makes them tea and she's like <laughs> i'm gonna make you all pee the bed <laughs> it's funny. But, but they were all excited about the dandelions. So they all ran outside, grabbed a bunch of dandelions and stuffed them in their mouths. And went, this is terrible. <laughs> and so that was I used to make smoothies. I used to make smoothies with dandelion greens in them. I'd just throw a bunch of dandelion greens and maybe like a, an apple or something just to give it a little, you know, so it's not just dandelion. And I felt amazing. I mean, I definitely felt amazing. Like, I they're good to, you throw the greens in a salad or something like you're just gonna have your whatever your regular salad is throw it yeah in there. like arugula or something yeah i used to do like uh just, yeah pretty it's pretty much what it is i used to just do a bunch of dandelion greens literally from the yard because we don't use any pesticides or anything and um we threw a bunch of greens and chop up a couple strawberries and throw some walnuts and a little faded cheese on there bam you know Awesome you know, the other stuff. interesting thing is a lot of those different plants, you know, they're, they've got a lot of vitamins that are good for you, but they also have these chemicals that fight back. Like they don't, it doesn't want to be eaten per se. And the, mm -hmm. there's chemicals that have a negative effect on your body. And that, that brings up an even more interesting point of, as far as, you know, the, the, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Like it, well, there's, there's so much in our really culture. Like, our our current Western culture is like very based on how can I make my life very easy without pain, without any kind of suffering, without any kind of, you know, negative quote unquote effects. And, and just, I was push this button. I get what I want and I don't have to suffer for it. And it we just came full circle. That's why I stopped my previous thought and said, let's talk about the dive deep in the shallow end. Because I think comfort and good is what gets confused today. You know, the things that are good for you often hurt and are very difficult, you know, and some of the best things in my life came from some of the hardest things I've had to do. So um, that's, that's it. You know, so why is everything that's so good for you taste so terrible? I think sometimes 
you know, not just food related now, but, you know, sometimes the, the really good path in life is not always the easy one. It's definitely not the popular one. And when you choose things that risk discomfort or embarrassment or, you know, uh, maybe being, um, oh, what, what would you say? Like contradictory to mainstream culture or, or people's ideas, you know, I, I'm not talking like full on lifestyles. I'm just talking about like individual decisions, even, you know, if it's something where it might create a little conflict between you and other people, people shy away from that stuff hard and they just never get to, to pass so many opportunities because it might not be comfortable or it might be awkward, socially awkward is the word I was looking for. People are so afraid of that. And I am definitely not. <laughs> so many good things have happened in my life because I don't care about social awkwardness, you know? Mm. So, yeah. Cool. That's a good point. Follow, follow the Lord and the paths will be made straight. And it doesn't mean that straight doesn't mean easy and comfortable. It just, yeah. I got you. Yeah, I spent like six months making a path straight at my parents' ranch with a pickaxe one time. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's why a lot of these mountain roads uh, just kind of wind, right? <laughs> like, well, we could go straight through the mountain, but that's going to be a real pain for us <laughs> making the road. <laughs> Who's making the road drive around and around and around? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, one of the good things that happened today, I don't know if you heard, but um, two weeks ago, Rob, the guy that takes care of most of my snakes, was a motorcycle accident. Oh, no, I did not hear that. It was pretty, pretty gnarly. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like a giant beanbag exploding. Huh. I'm just going to assume everything's okay. I don't hear anybody screaming. We'll call it good. Hey, everybody okay? I'm just going to, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, just going to pop upstairs just for a second. Okay. I'll tell a story. <laughs> well, Brian figures out which one of his bean bags exploded over there. Oh, he's coming back already. You got confirmation. You got verbal confirmation. Everything's good. I got, I got footsteps. That's good enough for me. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure somebody just jumped off of the couch, like with all full, with full force or something. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're a big boom, and yeah. then you wait for the silence, and you got to keep waiting because sometimes someone's just breathing in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rob. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he went by down by himself. Like he didn't crash into another car or something. He was going around a corner, and his front motorcycle tire pressure was a little bit low mm. two tires you need them to be both in operating order so he couldn't negotiate the turn as tightly as he should have slipped off into the gravel and went down uh but he broke his collarbone and Ooh. all ribs all of his ribs on his left side and oh. his so his left side is just jelly right now Gosh. you know everything that connects everything in your torso so he's in the hospital for a week uh, and then he's been home for a week and he just stopped by the, sh the shop today for a couple of hours. So that's the good news is that he's back. Um, it's been interesting because I run a pretty like tight ship. Like there's no one on my staff that's not busy. You know what I mean? We all do the work of one and a half people all the time. And uh, so it, <clears throat> you know, it's pretty crazy when you lose somebody that's like, you know, he's one of my key people. So, but it, it's been pretty cool to watch everybody else step up and get stuff taken care of. All the snakes are fine, you know, and everything like that. I don't think anything was like sacrificed while he was gone or whatever, but we all had to pitch in there. So that, that was 
not easy, but good. You know, it was very good to see my staff all taking care of each other like that and making sure the animals were okay. Lots of people ended up working late different times and stuff like that, just to make sure the animals were all right. Um, my, my wife even spent an entire day at the vet with one of the snakes, making sure that it was okay. You know, calling me back and forth to relay messages as I was doing other things. So yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. So I'm glad, I'm glad he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's coming back, but I mean, I, I think like, I, I mean, I've broken a few ribs before and oh my gosh, you're just, it hurts for a long time. And there's not much you can do as far as you, know, it's, you have to breathe, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. It only hurts when it breathes, when I breathe, you know? So yeah. So he was kind of like toughing it out or whatever, came into the shop, drove himself up there and everything and said, hey to everybody and kind of. I gave him the lay of the land because quite a bit has happened. You were talking about you had four clutches today. I think we've had like six or eight in the time that he's been gone. And so like, you, you know, you look at the baby racks and it's like, these ones are all sold. So like all the baby snakes he knew are gone now. And there's like all new snakes in there that he's never seen before just in the course of two weeks. Cause you know, this is crazy. So, um, yeah, and we had incubators filled and now we're to the point where I have one clutch left of, uh, of retics in there in our incubators that's still cooking. So yeah, just lots of stuff happening. Yeah. And then even just the, the things that matter to us and the things that wouldn't matter to like people outside the company. So like we moved a lot of stuff. You remember that room downstairs where the couches were, we sat down and had a cigar there with Deron the one time mm -hmm. that was like overall storage and junk and things like that. So we moved everything out and organized it all and set it all up as like a work room for Rob and the downstairs crew. Is, is that still going to be where all the displays are? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like museum thing or whatever, but I don't know when that part, well, actually, no. I mean, if you saw that, that vlog, the one big idea was to move the largest cage up a story. Um, so you remember where the couches were that we were sitting? Yeah. You would be sitting underneath the big retic cage instead of her being on that back wall. Okay. She's going to go up above that. That gives me more space for more displays downstairs. Okay. So it should be pretty fun. But um, that also allows me to just start moving cages in before we do all the major construction stuff. So it, are it you the, planning to have this all set by Retic Fest or is that out of the question? Well, do you remember when MJ came by earlier in the year? Uh -huh. and he gave a tour and everything and he's uh -huh. like, well, showing up like, the plan and he's like when are you gonna have this done by and i was like well i've been working at the business for three or four years now give me another three or four years and maybe this stuff will be done but uh then in the vlog i think i freaked my staff out you could see it on their faces when i was like i think i can have the big rig tick caves the one with the jeep by the end of this year and then when rob came back after two weeks of me sitting around scratching my head on how to get this stuff done i was like I think I have it done by Retic Fest, which is what, six weeks away, or eight weeks away or something. But not, I don't know. What, what, what do we have now? Half of May, all of June, and half of July. Eight weeks. I might be able to get it done. Okay. I'm going to have to bust my butt. But yeah, that and then some of the playground cages, the vertical cages that will be connected to all of our breeders' cages so that they can get out and have playground space and UV light and all that stuff. We're trying to change the way that people think about commercial cages. I think it's already happened in people's collections where people go from like having a 10 gallon aquarium with a piece of AstroTurf and hot rock for their reptile to be like, oh, let's oh, big time. Right. Right. Yeah. So like individually, people are like, oh, I'll check out this giant arboreal thing with waterfalls and bioactive and all that stuff. Have so you seen sc uh, scales reptiles? No, it's with scales with a Z. Um, he built like a reptile zoo in his, it looks like a little piece of like the reptarium in, in his, the bottom part of his house. That's cool. That's yeah. what everyone's doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, just have less reptiles and make it cooler. 
It's like when we went to snake discovery and I climbed in the cage with a Burmese python. It was eight foot Burmese python. It was like a 10 by 10 by 10 cage. And I was like, this is so cool. People would try to put 32 Burmese pythons in this, but it's so much more fun to just climb into this little closet of a jungle and sit with a Burmese python. But anyway, the AstroTurf hot rock and, you know, that style of enclosure is pretty much what commercial breeders still use today. They're not using the hot rocks and AstroTurf, but it's no more complex than that. You know, I mean, you've seen what we have them set up, like a high to water paper. Right. You're done, you know. Um, and it's set, like, specced and built around their needs a little bit better um, today than it used to be. But I'm trying to challenge that status quo. And I can't do it if it's not, not like, nobody will do it if it's not financially viable. Right. Same reason yeah. that, um, well, any, any business is look, it's the business is supposed to make money, right? Yeah. Well, that's always been the problem is that in the individual hobbyist, you can lose money on your cage. Of course, you're going to lose money on your cage. If it was a $5,000 cage, you spent $5,000 on it. But in the business, you must make money on it. So how do I advance husbandry in a commercial collection? you know, while still making money? That's a, it's a good question. Very challenging goal. And that's what we're trying to do with the new facility. You know, it gives me this, the time to do that. It's awesome. Well, you know, you're just going to get more people pissed off at you, Garrett. I don't know what to tell you. Why would they be pissed off at that? I don't know. Same reason they're pissed off because you up, upped any kind of get the, uh, your, your, your booth, you know, gosh, dang it. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I think if you do something different, then you like like the statement I just made, someone out there has AstroTurf and a hot rock with their green iguana on it in a 10 gallon aquarium. And they're saying, are you suggesting, sir, that what I'm doing is subpar? What makes you better than me? Um, and that's that's going to happen. But that's a that that doesn't have anything to do with the validity of my statement. That's just the defensive. I know. The, I know. It. Yeah. So we, I think those of us that are like, if we push, we have to be willing to accept that social awkwardness that we might make people defensive. And in no way am I ever trying to say I'm doing better than you are or whatever. But what I'm trying to do is <laughs> you're not trying to say it. You're just living it. <laughs> Kind of like, I mean, I don't know if it's better for the animals and stuff. It, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not really about a me versus you thing. It's about, can we advance the husbandry? And, and what was it? I, I feel like it was, um, what was the quote? Like, you know, everybody, everybody loves, what is it? Raymond. Everybody loves improvement. It's the cha change I have a heart time with <laughs> you know what i mean we clearly you cannot improve if you do not change watch me <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just being a smart ass i don't know i i just i i'm excited to i think i can make money and give my animals a i know life. you can i know you can i have well, zero doubt that you can it's, absolutely it's zero it's not been done before, you know what I mean? And he, even when I see, like, um, you know, we're both friends with Brian Barczyk, major revolution in his life. You know, he went from, like, the shoebox keeping of reptiles. He was literally, like, the face of keeping things in racks to now having this big zoo and saying how much he loves it and how much he's changed and how much he regrets keeping all the things in the racks all the time and stuff like that. But... He's not making money breeding animals in that zoo. The zoo might be making him money, but that's because of other things, YouTube, visitors, tours. He's not making money breeding animals in, those, in that zoo. So what I'm suggesting is not to build a giant zoo for every one of my animals, but I want to have some kind of a system that benefits the lives of the animals and makes money while I breed them in it. There's this uh, <clears throat> documentary that Hill put on for the kids the other day, and I wish that I could dredge up whatever it was called. Oh, ooh, it was like Apricot Valley Farm or something like that. Some kind of stone fruit valley 
farms and it's this farm that's like two hours south of us somewhere here in california which the majority of the country doesn't realize that california produces food for a good part of the world but we do the state oh, does huge um, yeah <laughs> but yeah everybody just thinks california oh, la no producing food for the entire nation um the but this farm did it differently than they, it's like the opposite of industrial farming it's like kind of like what you're talking about it's very much what you're talking about having something that's more like a family farm, but still producing on a not industrial compared to actual industrial farming, but being successful and running a business fam family style with, with not keeping things, you know, like, like ground cover everywhere, like, like crops growing over crops, you know, lower crops that are covering the ground and, and not just the bare dirt that you see with trees growing out of them on all these other farms. And not killing, not just trying to kill any kind of predator that comes along, but trying to incorporate them in with the farm, having the coyotes take care of the of the um, ground squirrel problem and 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 things like that. Um, it reminds me very much of what you're talking about on a you know a big outdoor farm scale, and it so it it can be done and often or at least not often, but at least in the, in that example, and I imagine that if you do it the way you, I believe you're going to do it, it ends up being better overall completely. Not just, not, not only are you going to be able to accomplish what you want to do, which is give the animals better husbandry and, and more of just more than an industrial environment and also succeed as a business. It certainly can be done um, anywhere. I think the idea is, and this is where the value of it is, on a farm like what you're talking about, if you can make it work and be profitable on one acre, then you can probably do it on a hundred, but you have to have that system and that system has to be scalable. So figuring out how to do that in the first place is the hardest part. And it includes a lot of trial and error, which can be very expensive, you know, uh, time consuming and everything else. Um, but the idea is if I can do it, we're a relatively small business as far as like, you know, reptile breeding goes, you know, like there are way bigger production, animal production facilities than what we do. But, um, but if we can do it and, and make it profitable, then they can do it too. And yeah, but you know what, Garrett, it's uncomfortable and it tastes bad. <laughs> yeah 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 well you know what i um so the the one thing is like if i invest all that time and money into making that kind of thing this kind of this works with youtube too right you try something different you try something new and your success or failure ultimately is whether or not people will support you in it you know what i mean so the idea would be do you care that your apricots come from a farm that incorporates the native environment or do you just look for the cheapest apricots? You know, knowing that they, they cleared all the land, killed all the animals and then cover everything in pesticides so that their apricots can grow and, and also give you cancer when you eat them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you care? You know, and I have faith that people today do care and connect with the history and the family behind the animal. Oh, that's you 100 percent correct. Yeah, I I think they do. They do. So at least at the higher end, and that's kind of why I don't do the like kind of mass production of basic species. Not basic is a, the wrong word, but like a widely accepted species. You know. Um, because there's, there's, they're too commoditized. The people running them have, have failed to preserve the artisanship in the breeding of their bloodlines. You know what I mean? And they're just trying to produce. So it's pretty fun. If it fails, you know, I'll just go into like watchmaking or something. Yeah. <laughs> Find something else that's I, completely useless. I don't, I don't think it's going to fail. I, I would be, I would be very, I would be shocked. I would be shocked and appalled if it failed. I don't see that happening. What's up, Noah Sage? <laughs> what? 
You want to say what's up to Garrett? Here, take the headphones. Hi, Garrett. Hey, buddy. Man, you're getting big. You're about ready to take on your old man, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah? I don't know. I don't know. You're like three years away. So, how you doing, buddy? Good. Yeah? You guys having a good time this summer or what? Yep. Yeah? How's your mom and your uh, brother and sister doing? Good. Yeah? What's, mm-hmm. what's new and exciting in your life today? What's something that you're newly excited about uh let's see what did i do today well started out talking to my grandpa this morning because he was here this morning and then um school uh, yeah yeah, some school yeah i did some school and then um, we put our little baby chicks in the coop with our um, adult chickens. Nice. That's like pretty cool. Getting them ready to head to the coop. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like a graduation ceremony for chickens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. How's your, how's your grandpa doing? And what, what's the coolest thing he's ever taught you or said to you do you have any wisdom for you uh a lot of things (laughs) i I can't even think of them all right now oh you just gotta share one pick a good one for us pick a good Uh, one well he taught me a lot of things about fishing yeah what's what's the most important thing you think when you go fishing uh Dad, did you teach me how to unhook the hook from the fish's lip? Yeah, you did that. Um, He helped me learn how to cast a lot better. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's good. And then what comes along with that is learning where the fish might be hanging out in the first place, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool stuff, man. Well, I miss you, bud. Hopefully, I'll get to see you soon. I uh, it's been too long since we got to hang out on the beach that one day. Remember that? Where was that? We were hanging out. There was like tide pools, and we were rocking on the rocks. And I got totally sunburned. And then I did that crazy skit with your dad, where I was pretending I was Bobby Wheatgrass in the basement that that day. What did we find on the beach, man? We found, wow, we found all kinds of cool stuff. But we were looking at the glass stuff and sea glass we were collecting. And I ended up sending you guys a tumbler. Did you ever even oh, use that tumbler? Our, uh, we haven't found many good rocks to put in it yet. But um, um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. We were good. at the Bluffs at Cayucas. Yes, that was the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Blue corn waffles that morning. Oh, yeah. Those things are good. Heck, yeah, buddy. Anyways, hopefully you can come to Pittsburgh sometime soon. Yeah. Tell your dad you want to come to Retic Fest. That's when is it? Summer. It's this summer. It's in July. It's at my house. Tell your dad that you don't come along. Okay, well. All right. Tell him, uh, what is it? Neo friend and the Carmel Kid need to have a reunion. Okay. <laughs> Get together. All right. Sounds good, Noah Sage. Yeah. Hey, give your family my love, okay? All right. All right. Yeah. Are we going fishing tonight? Are we going fishing tonight? I'll go ask mom. I'm asking you. I want to. Okay. Yeah, I got, speaking of fishing, I got to take these guys fishing in a minute. He sounds a lot more mature than the last time I was out there. Yeah, uh, he, he is. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you about this guy a little bit. Um, so when, when he was like two and a half, three, we sit around the kitchen table and he would tell us about God and he hadn't been to school or anything at that point. He just it was just like, where is this coming from? You know? Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see. And so we, we do this thing, the two of us a lot, we'll, we'll like, have what we call party nights where he he's had a nap or or he just has extra energy at night and just the two of us will hang out and have a party which generally means maybe getting some in and out or or something like that 
<clears throat> and the other night we're, we're doing just that. And I, we played dice and stuff. And I got the dice set up on the table. I was like, all right, but we're gonna have a party night and we'll go, go get some in and out. We're sitting in line in and out. And I started thinking, you know, maybe instead of just like going back and eating in and out and, and playing dice, like maybe we should go over some verses because it's been a big part of, of that. Like go over some Bible verses or something. And I'm thinking this in my head as we're standing up, sitting in line in and out. And he just, well, the second that I'm thinking that he says, dad, I'm, I'm really glad we became Christian. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? 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 <laughs> And I was like, why, why, why? And he just kind of broke it down in a simple no sage type of way. And I was like, well, that's funny, but because I was thinking instead of dice when we get home, I was thinking we go over a couple of verses and just kind of and do that instead. And he's like, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So he's been, he's been very encouraging uh, as well. Um, it's been really fun to watch him as much as he challenges me a bunch. You know, I, I feel like I'm becoming a much better father in this journey, but uh, he's still challenging me all the time. I just, you know, I, I try not to snap, but sometimes I snap. And I'm just like, dude, get it together. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where I was going with that other than I, I well, can hear awesome kids. I wanted to ask you what's your, uh, I was asking him what kind of wisdom he's got from his grandfather, but what's, mm. uh, what's his favorite verse or your favorite verse to go through with him? <sighs> I, don't, I don't have a favorite at this point. I, I really couldn't say a favorite. Um, Do you have any that have really hit hard for you? There's, there's been a number. There, there's been. It just depends on what the situation is. Um, I think it's just gonna be me and you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it looks like it's just gonna be me and him fishing tonight. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> um, man. There's been stuff in Romans. I still have a lot of studying to do. Like I, I still, I have definitely not been through every book whatsoever. But, um. Romans is a big one because those guys were basically early Americans. <laughs> right, right. So the country, the culture, everything is very similar. Yeah. I, well, I like in Romans eight, I just just to be able to remember and acknowledge that all men fall short of the glory of God. Period, and and just to remember that is is very helpful because you know at times people get I think and I had this too. This idea of what a, what a Christian is like, oh, you got to be perfect, right? Or you got to, and, and everybody fails at it. So I'm like, hey, Christians, look at you, <laughs> failing constantly. Yeah, I didn't understand. And and I I do now. Um, I'm still learning to understand more, but it, that's that's one. Uh, I really, I really appreciate the Lord's Prayer. I'll, I'll wake up and I don't have it memorized per se, but I'll, I'll wake up and I'll do a little warm up my body. You were kind of watching me do it one morning at your Airbnb last time at, uh, at Tinley when I was like doing, you're like, is that some kind of self love thing where I was like, I was doing a, a spine warm up basically. I grab my grab self. Yeah. It, just, it looks like I'm hugging myself and I just roll my spine. And that's a little session I do most mornings. And it's a little almost kind of yogic type of warm up the body thing. <clears throat> And every morning I pray right after I do that. Uh, not that I, I don't, I never plan to, but after, as soon as I'm like getting back up from having gone through that little session with my body and I, I feel like, oh man, so good to be alive. And I just, so I just pray and very often I um, do my own version of the Lord's Prayer, I guess, because I you know there's, there's different versions out there. You got King James, you got all the different translations, but I do some version of it just because it is that it, it's so, it's so good just to, the concepts are are deep but the idea of them if is is simple you know just you will be done here on earth as it is in, is in heaven i think that most people want that at the core of their being and soul whether they, they know it at, or not in those type of words like you want heaven and earth to come back together so that we can be like we were before everything got broken and and we're so separated from from nature as we are today and you know everything's discombobulated you want that you want that you want that back and you and you want to i want to i should say i want i feel, and when i say I, I want i feel like everybody wants that but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong but oh, there's a part of us there's a there's a part of us that uh you know, you're talking about everybody's sin and falls short of the glory of God. I think the way that that translates into everyday life is that, you know, you have this desire for something better, 
than what you have now. And I'm not talking about like a newer car or this or that. I'm talking about like, you know, you want to be a better person than you are today. You want tomorrow to, to bring you more fulfillment in your purpose than today had. And it's kind of like this, this yearning that you're always reaching for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and just to, and also to accomplish that, that idea of to be forgiven for the, your trespasses to be forgiven for the, for the places you mess up and to also right behind that, have that idea of, I need to also forgive those that are messing up at me or towards me. And because if I want forgiveness, I need to give it. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful, the concepts that I've been pulling out of that book are just so beautiful in their It's just how, how how beautifully balanced all the all the ideas are you know it's, it's just I, i'm not going to try and put it into words right now because i'm just going to screw it up horribly but it, it's been <laughs> there's already a bunch, bunch of really smart people that did they put it all together they call it the bible but <laughs> Bro, for those of you that are americans that want to chase that like you know you can be better you were made to be better how can we do this romans chapter six through eight is some good stuff for sure so but all right brother man it was good talking to you we'll have to catch up soon yes sir you should bring the sage retic fest that sounds like a great idea yeah maybe we'll even go fishing yeah <laughs> or you know just catch a snapping turtle or something <laughs> Fishing is, you know, it's it's a broad statement. <laughs> yeah, I only go fishing, so I have fish to reel in all the water snakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're eating trout tomorrow night, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That sounds good. Oh, man. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm going to roll. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying this, these little conversations and little connections as much as we are. And uh, we love you guys. I hope to connect with you guys soon. You were saying you like connecting with people. Find a way. Get somewhere we're going. Let's let's have that little bit of connection. That would be fun. So, Amen. <laughs> love Good you, night. Bro. Amen. Love you. Too. Bye. Searchable as a rep.